dear foreign participants, distinguished guests, thank you for being such a good audience throughout the day. I am Shamim Qureshi, Chairman of Pamudi, the Association of Multinational Companies, Regional Headquarters, based in the Philippines, who provide operational logistics and management support to parent companies and affiliates globally. They bring in substantial inward remittances, provide many well-paid jobs, and transfer of world-class human te technology and human resources development. <clears throat> These activities are covered by Republic Act 8756, <clears throat> signed by the President Estrada in November 2000, which sets out how RHQs will operate and the incentives provided to them. Before this act was signed, there were no ROHQs in the Philippines. Now we have approximately 200, which we have been able to attract. This was possible because of our sustained efforts to attract MNCs to reliquate in the Philippines, which could not be achieved without the support of various branches of government and the incentives provided under Republic Act 8756. In fact, the Philippines is the only country that has taken the initiative to pass specific laws to attract regional and operating headquarters and has been successful to date. <clears throat> Due to our efforts and the support of the government, the Philippines has been recognized as the preferred site for regional headquarters, despite efforts by other countries to attract them. We will continue to promote the Philippines and attract more MNCs to locate and stay in the Philippines, provided the government on their part continue to support our efforts to maintain and improve conditions which will attract major MNCs to choose the Philippines as a preferred site and remain in the Philippines. Thank you. <clears throat> now I am honored to announce the Lifetime Achievement Award for the 2017 of the Joint Foreign Chambers. This is the fifth time I am presenting this award. The criteria, are, criteria for the award are persons of any nationality who have spent their career and reside in the Philippines and have for at least 25 years contributed significantly to, to improving the country's business requirement. Our awardees were recognized for outstanding services in both the private sector. Some of our awardees are here. I recognize Director General Dilema, and I recognize Washington. She said, please give them a big hand. <laughs> President Ramos was here, but we were told he had to rush to the palace for a meeting. But we thank him for coming. Also, um, the awardee for 2016 has not been able to make it. This is our Roberto, Secretary Roberto Romolo. <clears throat> and now for our two, two, 2017 awardee, let me tell you something about his background. A Filipino whose early education was at Don Bosco Academy in Pampanga, followed by B. Cum Laude in economics degree from Matanea and an MA in public policy at the University of Wisconsin. Turning 65, he is the youngest of our awardees. He recently retired after 30 years in public service from the same agency where he rose through the ranks to become its head <clears throat> after returning from an assignment representing Philippines in the IMF. At the end of his first six-year terms as head, he was appointed to a second term, becoming the first chief of the organization to serve two terms, a total of 12 years under three presidents. He is a banker by profession. I'm sure you've identified who he is now, none other than Armando M. Tatanko, Jr. Uh, presentation and ask the governor to join me so that I can do so. I will also invite the presidents of the Joint Foreign Chambers to come on the stage. <coughs> May we ask the heads of the Joint Chambers of Commerce to kindly go up on stage.
Governor, I would like to briefly list a few of your achievements as, B as BSP Governor. They are important to the foreign investment community. Managing inflation, the exchange rate, and debt burden highly effectively. Achieving record levels of reserves exceeding $80 billion. Making reforms to increase the foreign banking presence in the Philippines. Raising confidence of rating agencies to give investment grade ratings to the Philippines. Emphasizing financial inclusion and education for young people. Moving the World Bank Economic, World Economic Forum ranking of the Philippines from 76 in 29 to 20, 20th in 216. This is ahead of Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and ASEAN. Insulating and cushioning the Philippine banking system from volatility when the world outside was highly valuable. Being a great example of a professional management in government and being repeatedly ranked among the most central top Philippine central bankers of the world. Making the BSP the top rated agency in the Philippine government. We are grateful to you for your legacy, which will last long under your able successor. So now you will have more time for golf, travel, and be with your family. Thank you. The award that I'm going to give you now reads, in recognition of outstanding contribution and superb leadership over several decades to achieving highly significant and lasting institutional and policy reforms of long-term benefit to the people and the economy of the Republic of the Philippines. Congratulations, Governor. I would request the governor to address us with a few words. Thank you. You okay? You can yeah. the sure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kurashi. The uh, officers and members of the uh, uh, joint foreign chambers of the Philippines, uh, special guests, uh, forum uh, participants, uh, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Let me begin by expressing my sincere gratitude and appreciation to the joint foreign chambers of commerce of the Philippines for this Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm deeply honored to accept this award, and I humbly share it with the men and women of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Your organization's initiative to give recognition to the notable contributions of public servants to nation building is indeed a reflection of your keen interest and strong support for the government's pursuit of meaningful socioeconomic development in the country. I feel very privileged to have been selected to receive this year's award and join the roster of distinguished past awardees, two of whom are here uh, with us this afternoon, uh, former PES head Lilia De Lima and uh, Mr. Washington Sisip. I understand I understand uh, former President Ramos was here earlier but had to, had to leave. And for someone who has been a central banker for almost his entire adult life and one who has served as governor for the last 12 years, this award is most definitely a cherished citation to one service to the country. More importantly, I view this as a recognition of the consistent efforts of the BSP to create and maintain a macroeconomic environment 
that is conducive to sustainable, strong economic growth. I also wish to take this opportunity to express my deep appreciation for the support and cooperation of the leaders and members of JFC uh, who have extended, that they have extended to us at the BSP and other government agencies. They have actually uh, engaged us in dialogues, meetings, and conferences, and produced policy briefs and notes to share your insights in the formulation and implementation of policies and programs. This is a crucial element in the operations of the public sector. The choice of the theme for this year's Arangkada Philippines Forum, implementing the 10-point agenda, shows your fervent desire and active support to see the plan succeed. Given JFC's position of influence, with its membership comprised of active foreign players in the Philippine economy, you have an important role to play. Your valuable partnership and inputs, including constructive criticisms, will undoubtedly help in pushing the execution of the various critical components of the agenda. In any endeavor, goal setting is an essential ingredient. As American author Sig Zagler said, a goal properly set is halfway reached. Thus, the government's early setting of the agenda, which enjoys the support of members of the private sector, like the JFC, already accomplished the first step toward the goal of enhancing the competitiveness of the business environment, accelerating economic growth, and making growth more inclusive. The main job now is timely implementation to turn the elements in the agenda into reality. <clears throat> so far, we've had 74 consecutive quarters of positive GDP growth in the Philippines, accompanied by low and stable inflation, a sound, well-capitalized and liquid banking system that continues to intermediate funds to the productive sectors of the economy, and poverty incidents that continues to decline over the years. The BSP has helped cultivate this positive alignment of macroeconomic indicators through calibrated monetary policy aided by enhanced surveillance and an expanded toolkit, responsive banking regulations aligned with international standards but recognizing relevant domestic conditions, and market-determined external policy including the liberalization of foreign exchange regulations. In the years following the global financial crisis, we have also endeavored to adopt a more holistic approach to policy by incorporating financial stability as the overarching strategic goal of policy formulation. I'm fortunate that all these policies could be implemented in the context of an independent central bank. In fulfilling the mandate of any central bank, it is crucial to maintain institutional credibility, which in turn fosters policy independence and vice versa. Moreover, in the BSP, we have made sure that the social dimension of policy is not ignored. We have therefore earnestly pursued financial inclusion, not just as a nice to have advocacy, but as a true policy objective. In this way, we believe we are able to safeguard that the benefits from a stronger macroeconomy are shared by a greater number. I'm convinced that aiming for more inclusive economic growth is a fitting anchor for public service. And aspiring for a more inclusive financial system is a proper guidance to central banking. Finally, given the country's strong macroeconomic fundamentals, sound economic management, solid domestic demand, and a young and vibrant workforce, the Philippines is well positioned to become Asia's next economic powerhouse. In fact, the World Bank's June 2017 Global Economic Prospects projects that the Philippines will be in the top 10 fastest growing economies in the world with a GDP growth forecast of 6.8%. With a reform-oriented government, and a collaborative private sector, achieving the Philippines' goal of becoming an upper-middle-income economy by 2022 
is indeed highly feasible. Being governor is a role that had many challenges, but one that I will always cherish. I feel very honored and also humbled to have been given the opportunity to serve in that capacity. Now that my term at the, at the BSP has ended, I look forward to the work exemplified by private sector or organizations like the JFC that proves public service is not a monopoly of the government. The private sector has a tremendous role to play in improving people's lives. I will constantly bear this lesson in mind as I move on to this new chapter of my life as a private citizen. Again, thank you very much for this recognition and a pleasant afternoon to all of you. May we request Governor Tatanko to please uh, join the group on stage for a photo opportunity, please. May we also invite our past winners present to join them on stage for a photo as well. And Mr. Washington C. Zip also like to join the group photograph. It's your opportunity. Thank you. Congratulations once again to our recipient, Governor Amado Tetanko Jr. Let's give him a big hand, everyone. We have come to the end of our program. Now to formally close our forum, may we call on stage the President of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, Mr. Julian H. Payne. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to all of you. And uh, I have the hardest job, which is retaining your attention while you're thinking of facing the traffic when you leave here. But be confident that with the implementation of the 10-point agenda, the names of traffic jams may just be over in a few years. So this may be one of the few last times you can experience it. I would like to make five very brief points in summary. First, it's obvious to us from the presentations that the Philippines has all the economic, social, and human resources requirements to become a high middle income country like Malaysia and Thailand, or if even better. Second, the public and private sectors know what has to be done. We have all sorts of programs, Arancada, 10 point agenda, and so on. Third, there are sufficient financial and economic resources in the public, private, and multilateral sector to do what has to be done. Fourth, the Philippines is advancing and is progressing. GDP growth is high, investment has grown, more jobs are being created, poverty is being reduced, spending on infrastructure, education, and health is being increased. However, and there's always a however, Fifth is making all these positive factors work in our favor 
for the country's advantage is not going to happen without solid implementation and commitment by the government, all branches, by the private sector, and other sectors. In conclusion, we should be confident that the private sector, represented by JM, JFC members, are prepared to invest their financial resources, their FDI, their technology, and international trade under the right circumstances and conditions. Let's all work to make that prevail and that happen. We are confident that with the 10-point agenda successfully implemented, we can achieve the aims of that agenda of the JFC and I'm sure of everyone here. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, thank you, Maraming Salamat Paul. Thank you so much, Mr.